the cerebrum, the big outer part of the brain with all these lobes, is all about you thinking and processing information at a high level. All the thoughts that you think, all the emotions and feelings that you have are taking place in that cerebrum. But in this video, we're talking about the internal structures of the brain. These are gonna be structures that all animals have, and they're gonna help keep us alive at a more basic level. They're gonna control things like our breathing and heart rate, the maintenance of homeostasis throughout the body, and all of those other processes that we don't consciously think about, but that are super important for keeping us alive and healthy. We're gonna be looking at a sagittal cross section just like this, and we're gonna cover the corpus callosum, the parts of the diencephalon, which include the thalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and pineal gland, and finally the three parts of the brainstem. And all you need to understand this is this right here. So let's jump to the whiteboard. So like I said, this largest outer structure around the brain is the cerebrum and it includes the frontal parietal occipital lobe as well as the temporal lobe. And it's gonna control a lot of higher order processes like processing information, making decisions, our emotions and personality, things that separate us from other types of animals. We humans have developed really large cerebrums in order to do all the thinking and thought processing that we do. Posterior and inferior to that, we also have the cerebellum, which is gonna help us to maintain balance and posture, as well as coordinate all of our complex movements that we do. I covered all of that way more in depth in part one of this video, link in the description below. But for now, we're gonna focus on these internal structures right here. The first I wanna talk about is the corpus callosum, and it's the structure that's gonna connect the two halves or two hemispheres of the cerebrum. We have a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere, and for a lot of functions, they work independently of each other, but they need to communicate back and forth, and they do that through a system of nerves that are here in the corpus callosum. Interesting fact about the corpus callosum, a lot of times when people have seizures really bad, one of the treatments for that is cutting the corpus callosum, which causes there to be two halves of the cerebrum that actually work independently of each other. Next, we're gonna talk about four parts of the diencephalon, which include the thalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary, and pineal gland. The thalamus, which is just inferior to the corpus callosum, is sort of a relay station between the spinal cord and the other parts of the brain. It's full of a bunch of synapses or connections between neurons. Neurons from the spinal cord, which are bringing information up into the thalamus, which will connect to the dendrites of neurons in the thalamus to send those signals to whatever part of the brain they need to go to. If you've ever seen an old movie where the operator is directing people's calls to where they need to go, that's a really good metaphor for the hypothalamus. It's a relay station between the spinal cord and the various parts of the cerebrum. The next structure is the hypothalamus, which literally means under the thalamus. Hypo means under, under the thalamus. And even though this is a tiny structure in the brain, it's one of the most important. The thalamus is gonna be the center of homeostatic control in the brain. This covers the regulation of many processes, including body temperature, water and electrolyte balance, hunger, digestive secretions, as well as helping regulate your autonomic nervous system, which includes your fight and flight or rest and digest response. And that hypothalamus is in charge of regulating all of those different processes. One of the ways that it does this is by controlling the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland right here is gonna be an endocrine gland that controls all of the other endocrine glands. And it is controlled by the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus will send action potentials and hormones down to the pituitary gland to tell the pituitary gland what to do. The pituitary gland, in turn, then sends its own hormones out to all kinds of structures in the body, including all the other endocrine glands, to regulate those. So the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland really are a connection between the nervous system and the endocrine system, which are the two systems that are in charge of regulating and controlling your body. The nervous system doing that with action potentials in neurons, and the endocrine system doing that with hormones that travel throughout your body via the bloodstream. Finally, posterior to all of this, we have the pineal gland. The pineal gland is gonna release the hormone melatonin, which is gonna help you sleep better. Melatonin will calm the brain and make you feel nice and relaxed. And the name of that hormone, melatonin, comes from that prefix mela, meaning dark. And this hormone is released more whenever your environment is darker. So if you turn out the lights whenever you try to go to sleep, that's gonna help you sleep better because your brain will produce more melatonin. But if the lights are on and you're trying to sleep, you have less melatonin production and therefore it'll be harder for your brain to fall asleep. So that pineal gland is gonna regulate your sleep cycle through the release of melatonin. Again, those four parts of the diencephalon or the thalamus, which works as a relay station between the spinal cord and the brain, the hypothalamus, which is in charge of regulating homeostatic processes throughout the body, the pituitary gland, which is gonna control all of the other endocrine glands, and the pineal gland, which is gonna help regulate your sleep cycle. Inferior to all of that, we have the brainstem. The first function of the whole brainstem is to be a pathway for signals to travel from the spinal cord down here up through to the rest of the brain. Just by their location, signals have to pass through that brainstem to get everywhere else. The brainstem has three parts to it, which include the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. 
The midbrain, which is the most superior of these, is in charge of auditory and visual reflexes. So if somebody bumps your shoulder and you instantly turn, hey, I'm walking here, to see what was going on, or if you see something out of the corner of your eye and it causes you to jump, those are reflexes that are processed in the midbrain. And a reflex just means it's something that you're gonna react to even before it gets up to your cerebrum where you can consciously process and think about what just happened. In the case of these reflexes, information is sent from your eyes or your skin to that midbrain and then straight back out to muscles to cause you to jerk or to move. And only after that can your frontal lobe and your cerebrum process what happened. The pons, which just means bridge in Latin, is gonna be a site where information from the cerebellum is integrated with information coming from the motor cortex, as well as sensory information coming up from the spinal cord. Since the cerebellum is in charge of coordination, it needs sensory input as well as motor input so it can make corrections as needed so that we have better coordination. An example of that would be catching a ball. We need to be able to see and sense the ball as well as move our hands and body. And so that cerebellum and pons are crucial for hand-eye coordination and other coordinated movements. Finally, the most inferior part of the brainstem is the medulla oblongata, which is the cardiac center of the brain. This is gonna regulate our heart rate, it's gonna regulate our breathing, and it's gonna regulate vasoconstriction, which is our blood vessels constricting, or vasodilation, our blood vessels relaxing. So think heart, blood vessels, and lungs when you think of the medulla oblongata. And most inferiorly down at the base of the brain is the spinal cord, which is gonna take information up to the brain and send information out from the brain. Those are some of the major internal structures of the brain. Now let's do a quick recap. Pause the video and see if you can identify all of these structures as well as all of the functions that each structure does. We have the cerebrum, which controls thinking and information processing. We have the corpus callosum, which is gonna connect the two hemispheres of the cerebrum and help them communicate back and forth. We have the thalamus, which is a relay station between the spinal cord and the cerebrum. We have the hypothalamus, which is the homeostatic control center of the body. That's gonna control the pituitary gland, which is the gland that's gonna control all of the other endocrine glands. We have the pineal gland, which is gonna release melatonin to help regulate your sleep cycle. And those four structures make up the diencephalon. Inferior to that, we have the brainstem, which is a pathway of signals to make it from the spinal cord up to the rest of the brain. The brainstem has three parts. We have the midbrain at the top, which is gonna control auditory and visual reflexes. We have the pons, which is gonna be a connection between sensory and motor signals, and the cerebellum, which is gonna coordinate those movements. And finally, we have the medulla oblongata, which is the cardiac center of the brain. It's gonna regulate our heart rate, the constriction and dilation of our blood vessels, as well as our breathing. We have the cerebellum, which is gonna coordinate your movements and help with balance and posture. And finally, the spinal cord at the bottom. So there you have it. If you haven't checked out part one of this video, I encourage you to do that and to learn all about the cerebrum and the cerebellum and more about how those work. A student told me the other day that the brain is the only organ that is named itself, which is totally true. Thanks for watching. I'm especially thankful for my cerebellum, without which I couldn't do all of these excellent dance moves. Don't look at me like that, or your dance moves. Look how sassy Mortimer looks today. What's up with that? <laughs>